Hello and welcome to the script case demonstration. My name is Jamie Oates and I am your host today. In this demo, I'm going to teach you more about some of the great capabilities available in script case, as well as what it is, what it's all about, and how it can help you in developing some amazing platforms rapidly, on target, and cost efficiently. And all of that with some ease. Scriptcase is a truly efficient local development platform. It can help you with the creation of complete web systems, portals, and just about any type of platform you may need. You can add business intelligence to your applications with a few clicks and some basic code, and leverage the full power of Scriptcase by using the inbuilt macros and events. Scriptcase is a solution used worldwide in different countries. We have scores of individual developers, small companies, and large businesses using this powerful development environment. You can test it yourself in a few simple steps. Download, run, and install, and off you go. You can install Scriptcase locally on your computer or on a dedicated web server. It is free to use for 20 days, so you can start creating your own projects today and give it a try before you buy. During this demonstration, I'm going to show you some of the main points and applications available within Scriptcase, such as the initial project creation, the grid application, the form application, the chart application, the dedicated dashboard app, the available menu options, and also the built-in security module. I'm starting off here on the Scriptcase website where we can then download. From here, we can then download the version for our operating system. If I scroll down, you have other options here to download Scriptcase. You can install it on your own local machine or on a web server. Once you have it installed, you will then have the following login page available, which is then accessible via your web browser. So before I log in and start, do let me warn you that Scriptcase is a supercharged development environment. The customization options and capabilities are to the extreme. But with its intuitive interface and ease of use, anybody can create a powerful platform with Scriptcase. Okay, so with my web browser open, I can enter the URL to open the login page or from my desktop, I actually just double click the icon, which would then open my web browser and give me the interface or the login page for the Scriptcase development environment. So from here I can log in and then can then start beginning to create my projects. So as you see, I'm starting for, with a very fresh interface. So it is cleanly installed and it is in fact a online version. So if I bring this down here for a moment, you can see here that the URL is actually online and locally it would then be with a 127 IP address and that would then indicate that it is uh, running locally. Within script case, we have then here, first of all, at the top, we have here our main menu bar. So from here we can then manage our project. Um, manage the database, the applications, modules, and so on. So there's quite a lot there we can do. Below that, we have then our ribbon bar, which then all becomes available once we open our project and then also start opening applications. The remaining ones will also become available to use. Now, at the top right-hand corner here, we have here our uh, script case profile. So we have here our license information as well as the product information, how many concurrent connections or developers can actually log in at the same time and use script case. And basically in my case here, as you see, I have five concurrent connections. I can have five different developers log into my online script case and start using or building projects or working on the same projects that I am. And for that, you can even keep notes between developers and so forth. So there's quite a lot you can actually do between users. Okay, so I'm gonna start off then here by creating first of all a project. So I click here the option create project and then within script case, we already have multiple themes and templates here available. So here if I have, I have for instance, the point of sales, uh, samples applications, which is very good. You'll find samples of each application and how they can be configured as well as demonstrations of each application available within script case. So from that, you can learn a great deal as well as replicate and copy that to your own projects. These other templates that we have available here, you can also use these, generate one of them and learn from them or use them as a, an initial starting point for your own project. So I'm gonna start off by creating a blank project and for each project we can actually add an icon. So from here we have an image manager built in, 
which then manages all the images and I can add then images here or at this point we want to first of all give this project a name so I'll call it project underscore demo. I can also apply a description to the project as well as indicate additional information within the box here below. So once I'm happy with my initial definitions I go next and then we come to the database selection. So Scriptcase supports multiple databases right from the get-go. You see here as default MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, Informix, SQLite, Sybase. We even have online databases, Microsoft Azure, Amazon, RDS, Google Cloud, Oracle Cloud, and so forth. So you can select here your database, indicate your connection parameters, which we're going to do also. And here, as you may have seen, I just selected MySQL. So I will be creating a MySQL connection. And for that, I will need to be grabbing the database base details so just a moment let me add those and then once you have entered your username and password we can then test here the connection and right now I have nothing selected so if I can list here the databases I can then select the database I want to use so here I will use the samples English I can then test the connection and it will show that the connection is successfully connected so directly here we can configure our MySQL connection we have security filter and advanced options where we can add persistent connections as well as uh, change the driver for the connection and so forth. So we have uh, quite a few options there just for the database. And that is then typically for all databases that are then supported by Scriptcase that there are then multiple options available. So up next, then we have our language selection. So Scriptcase does support multiple languages. Built from the core, you can actually add any type of language you'd like. So from here, if I select add language, for instance, we have then a drop menu with pretty much just about every language available as well as the uh, various regional settings per language. Okay, so we can add those as well as then change the character set. So I'm just going to stick with English and leave it as so, and go ahead and click next. So as I said, templates as well as themes are built into Scriptcase. Here I have then the theme selection for our overall project. So this will then be the themes that I want to have available. Now I can add multiple, so I can select here an extra theme or two, three, four of them, and have all of these available within my project, as well as add a drop menu and allow end users to actually change the theme or even customize that further so that on login, every user has their own type of theme within the project. Anything is possible within that scenario. So here, for this case, I'm just going to leave the SC9 Blueberry and I will go create. Okay, so once we've initially created our project, the script case will then request that you create a new application. Because if I close this, for instance, we will see that I have no applications here available. So that is then the default window that always then happens. We can access that again here by clicking the new application button up in the ribbon Bar. Now, as you can see, all of these have now become active other than these four buttons that we have here, which are then specific to applications. Okay, so we have up here the data dictionary and the application language, which are then due, uh, used for the application languages, as well as then the customization of custom variables that you can actually then place your words into. So basically it's your own dictionary, which you can then also apply within your project. So this is super powerful. We won't be showing this today, I'm afraid, but this is definitely worth looking at and applying within your project. Project. So as I had already closed the new application, I'm going to go ahead and close it again and we can just have a quick look at the initial um, layout. So below here we have first of all our home tab and then we have here the folders where we can then specifically indicate that we want to view all applications, my applications, recent applications or our root folder. So within here, I can actually go ahead and create multiple folders and use them within then the organization of my project. And as you see again, as I've not created any applications yet, it's again asking me to create an application. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in a moment. So first of all, we have here all of our applications. We have the grid applications, which allows us to list our data. We have the chart application, which we can then define specific charts. Now it's very important to note that the grid application also has the chart as well as the search application built into it. Now the majority of applications also do include search. For instance, the form application includes search. And with that, then you can generate your applications with search features and capabilities already built in, as well as then the PDF feature. Export field features are built into the grid application as well as the form application. So then you can actually just export your data as you see it within the application within a few clicks. So it's not much to configure there. It's all automatic and it's all 
quite quick and easy to apply. So next application that we have is our form. We have then, uh, which generates then directly from the database, again, also as the grid application. We have then also the control application, which allows us to create any type of form we want. So if we want a form application, but we want to actually customize it. So instead of having all the default fields taken from the database, we want to define our own fields, then we can do that within the control application and then actually apply any kind of uh, dynamic abilities as well as features to the application. So we also have a dedicated search application. So as I mentioned, the grid and form comes with search. The dedicated search application will give you a more fully fledged search application individually. So it does not include the grid or any other application within the same app. So we then also have the menu application. So we do have two types of menu. We have, first of all, the default horizontal as well as then the vertical menu within this one menu application. But we then also have the tree menu, which allows us then to create a different type of menu for a different application. Okay, we also have a tab application where we can then insert basically the grid application or form inside of the tabs and view that within then a tab functionality. So you will notice as we continue on that the form application, for instance, has tabs and basically a layout feature, which allows you to also add tabs. So this is separate from that and then allows you to actually structure your applications to a grander scale. Okay, so you have also a PDF report, so dedicated for PDF reports. This does include a complete visual designer, so it's quite easy to apply and create your own PDFs. We also have a dashboard application, so we can quickly generate targeted information and display that to our end users. We also have the blank application, which allows us to create pretty much anything we want. If you want to just display a page or any type of content, you can do that within the blank application. If you want to create pop-up windows that uh, appear and give information and maybe just a close button or whatever it is, you can create all of that within the blank application. The calendar application, again, is dedicated to displaying a calendar. Now that does include a mini calendar as well as a full blown browser based calendar for you, which does also integrate with Google. Now the majority of applications do allow API access. So that is very important to note as they function very nicely. Okay, so I will start off by creating first of all the grid application. And with the grid application, I can select here my table. We have here my default connection selected. If I have multiple connections as yes, we can add also multiple connections, connect to one database or to another uh, remote or locally, however you want. And we can have our applications synchronize, work with multiple databases at the same time. So we have here our name field. Now by default, if I select here a table, for instance, now I will use here, say for instance, the sales table. If I select that, it will automatically define the name, indicate the fields that are available and provide here the SQL statement. So I expand that a little bit and we can see here that all of the fields within this table have been defined here. And I can also go ahead and edit that here if I want to and add a where statement or any of anything else that I need to. We can also define here the localization, which we can also customize here further. We have at the top here, edit fields option, which allows us then to customize the fields that we want to have displayed within the grid straight away. Say for instance here, I can select the sales, cost, profit, and quantity sold, that I want those displayed within the grid. And then we want to have the customer and product available within search and we can leave those other fields. So as you can see, I've selected some and I've deselected some and those will then be available within the grid application directly. We can also change here the data type. Now the data type is a very important field which we will come to shortly and we will see that within the uh, grid as well as the form application because that then allows us to change what kind of field this will actually be displayed as. Okay, so I will continue on for now. Come back here to application data. And at the bottom here, we also have the option to create the edit form. So when we generate the grid application, it will generate the form, which is also required to edit the same data. So then we have the edit feature and insert features already added to the form. And if I deselect that, then it says here, do we want to make this change behavior default. So I'm just going to cancel that for now. And if I will select that again, and I'll cancel that again. So right now, the public window is asking me if I want to actually set this as a default. I have this disabled at the moment. I leave that for the time being. So we have here the create option to generate the form. And below that, we have then also the form name. So we have grid sales and form sales. Now just below that, I have here the option to also run the application. 
once it has been created. So I will go ahead and click create now and Scriptcase will now go and generate both of those applications for me. And we can see here, first of all, the grid sales has opened. Scriptcase is generating the source and we could see that really quickly it was generating two applications, which is then here also the add new. So if I click here, we have then our form, which then also leads here to the edit option. Okay and our default grid. So that is our default form and default grid layout. So I will come back to that in a moment. Let me come back here first of all to the grid application and we can see here that it has just opened up the grid. So I'll come back here to home and we can see now we have here our form sales and grid sales applications both been that have both been created. Okay, so I will click the form sales and open that. And then from here, I can then manage the form. And as you can see, when I place them both side by side, the form sales and the grid sales, the majority of features or options within the navigation menu are quite similar. And you'll see, you'll get to know that as you, as you get to use it. Now, a, lot of the, a lot of the features are similar. A lot of the applications combine a lot of the other applications together, making them super powerful agile and very easy to use. Okay, so coming back here to then the grid application, you can see here that we have our modules. Now, within the modules, we have then our search. As I said, search is included. We have our grid module. We have our detail module. So if I come here back to the grid application, this here is then the detail module. And that is then also included within the grid by default and we have our summary module and our chart module. Now for both of these, if I come back here to the grid application, we see no options here yet for the chart or for the summary. But now if I would go ahead, for instance, and come here to group by, and if I set a static group by, and if I come here to fields, and what I can do then now here, as you can see, I have dynamic group by, and just below that I also have the static group by. Now I can apply both here into the grid application. I'm going to start with the dynamic. And if I add here, for instance, we have here the grid fields, which are available within the grid application. We have the grid by fields, we have the grid totals, and then we also have the summary totals. Okay, so I will add here, first of all, into the grid by fields. First of all, here the region, the category, the product, and I will also add the sales date multiple times. Okay, so now for the sales date, we can see that we have here year, quarter and month indicated. And if I select that, I have then a drop menu, which then I can then choose multiple date options. So I have then multiple months, year and months, month, day and so forth. And then I can adjust those within the application and also move them around as I please. Now, if I go ahead and well, let's add here first of all our summary totals. So there we will need the record count. And let's add here also our sales and let's do that twice. So we have here a sum of our sales and let's also indicate the average. Now, as you can see again here, here I have another drop down menu and I can select the types of count options or variable numbers that I want to have applied there. And if I go ahead and run the grid application now, we'll have then first of all here, all of the options applied because I have them all ticked here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and deselect all of these and then run the grid application again. Okay, and we're gonna see that the grid application will now remove all of those groups and it looks like it did before. Just the only difference is now we have here a group by button. And if I choose that or I click on it, then I can from here drag and drop the fields that I want to have everything grouped by. Okay, so then I can apply everything by a region in fact, if I go then by sales year of date and apply that, then we have everything divided into years, 2013 and so forth within our application. Okay, if I come back then into script case and what I'm going to do is then also apply a static group by. And then here I will apply the new group by, so I select new group by and we can add up here a name for this and the, here I'll just call this region sales date. And then what we can do is then drag in here the region and the sales date. And again here I can change the axis and I can also change the format. So I will leave year and then for sales I'll add here the gr uh, grid totals, sales and sum. And the summary total also again sales and sum. Now if I go ahead and run that, 
we will now have the group by applied for the static and if I click here the static the group by button we now have here the static option and here also the dynamic option allowing us to change that as and when we need and we can see that we have that here now there is an extra very important feature here if I come back here into script case and access here in the left hand side the save grid option now here I have multiple options here to actually save the grid so what I'm going to do is select here public and it will add a default name for me. I will leave the options here as simplified and then we can also change other options to save the uh, search and session and so forth. I'm just gonna go ahead and run that for now and then back here within the grid option, we can now see that we have here also a save button available. So if I come back here to group by, apply a dynamic group by for instance, I could then save that here and save that for public level for instance and then add in here my name or a name for the save save that and then when the grid refreshes so if i and then when i come back here to the save i then have my save option here available and i can quickly apply that and it is available then within the grid application okay so to quickly actually make it look really nice i'm going to jump here into settings and make some really quick adjustments i'm going to apply the top vertical alignment and if I come back here then also to the grid modules and save that in between. For the grid, I'm going to apply a 100% width and set that as percentage and run that again. And just like that, our grid application will then fit nice and snugly within our browser window. So with all our grid data here um, grouped by and we have here our summary option, we can click here the summary button and we can view then here the summary data for our grid. We also then have the charts built into that so we can click through that and then view the specific data we have available on our charts. The charts are also fully configurable, so we can change the data dynamically within the uh, browser window and provide those options to our end users. Of course, all of that is configurable and changeable within script case. We have then also then all the options here to change the chart, apply Gantt charts and so forth. As I previously mentioned, search is fully built in here. So if I come back down here to search, we have here the search options and we can apply here various search options. For instance, we have our quick search and we have here the layout that we can apply to that. We can specify the search criteria that is applied. We have a dynamic search as well as the advanced search. And each of these are then fully configurable. Again, for the dynamic search, we can indicate the fields that we want to have applied for the dynamic search now i save that again within the grid application the information is then updated and we have then now a dynamic search available which can then be applied within the grid application we can customize our advanced search as well as uh, select the fields that we want to have applied there and set up each of those fields as mentioned with the summary we also have here the chart options where we can change various options within the chart, what kind of chart we want to have displayed straight away, apply sorting capabilities, change the toolbar, and much more within the application. Okay, so there are 101 features within this application. To make it quick and easy, I'm going to return back here to the grid modules. And what we have here is the option to change the initial application that we want to display. So now that we've grouped our applications, the summary and chart, the summary and chart options here have become available. So what I can do is I can select here the summary option and go ahead and run that for instance, and that will then display the summary application immediately. And again, we can go ahead and customize that back in script case. As I mentioned here for the summary, we have here all the options for the settings and so forth that we can apply. So again, here I want to apply 100% width to my application and have that fill out the browser window for this demonstration. Okay, so directly from here, we can then go ahead and view the various uh, charts from here, as well as group our information differently, dynamically or statically. We have our chart options up here also, where we can change the type of charts that we want to have displayed and generated. And we have various other settings here as well, including the detail and option to save. And the next options I'd like to show you are all of the export features here within script case. For instance, if I select here the option to export, I have here first of all the email that I can then apply a custom API and link then to an SMTP gateway, a Mandrill gateway, or even Amazon. And I can then add here the custom email specifications for our server, as well as here then the export options to indicate the email address and so forth 
for each of the fields. Below that, then we also have the various types to which we can export to. For instance, here we have the PDF, we have Word, we have CSV, and we can export to either one of these as well as customize all of the options, add passwords to the exported file, and so much more. That is then all customizable within Scriptcase and then available here within our grid application, which then presents us the various options. For instance, here we have here the export option, and if I select here the PDF, for instance, it opens up then the PDF uh, generator, and from here we can then select the columns that we want to have displayed within our PDF, for instance, as well as define the various settings. I can then click OK, and our PDF will then be generated, which we can then download and view. And as you can see, the PDF is then generated. We have then a table of contents, which is then also applied and can be then also fully customized within the application. The PDF charts are also included and again can be customized. So the grid application is very powerful all in itself and provides us many features and capabilities for the display of our data. Okay, so with our summary chart near completion, I'm going to come back here to script case and let's come back here to summary and summary settings. And if I scroll down here, I can choose here the position from the Y axis to the X axis. And if I run that again, we will now see that change around within our application. So our data is a little more presentable now and makes a little more sense. We have here then the year of sales. We have up here each of our charts available. One last thing I want to do now is come back here to the summary. And if I come here to the search and fields, I will now quickly apply some search fields in here. So I will add here, first of all, the sales date, the region, and also let's add sales. And if I go ahead and run that, within our grid application, we now have those fields available at the top here, and we can directly search for those. For instance, I can change the region, I can change the year to which we want to have that then displayed. Okay, so and here also, again, if I come back a year, for instance, go okay, again, we can have the search all built into our application as we want to have it displayed for our end users. Okay, so we have then also our form application. And as you've seen, that was generated with the good sales. I'm going to leave that as default and leave it as it is for this demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new application and I will go ahead and create a new form. And this form, I will choose the customers table. So it will automatically indicate form customers. And when we generate forms, we have up here, first of all, the option to create single rows, a multiple row form, an editable grid uh, form, or an editable grid view form. Each one of those presents us a different type of layout for the form application. At the top here, we can again also adjust our fields, uh, indicate whether we want to have them displayed on insert, or update and also read only or indicate whether those fields are required. So we could do that all already at this stage or we can do that afterwards. We can also specify here the theme of this application if we have multiple themes applied. So I'll go ahead now and click create. So within this form, we have a great deal of data. And the reason why I'm actually showing you this one and didn't continue with the previous one is that we have specific fields here. So for instance, we have here um, date values, we have numbers and integers, as well as uh, text. We have images also, and also a signature field and rating, where we can basically rate our customers. Back within script case and our form application, as mentioned, we have our initial orientations that we can choose from. And we can see here straight away, if I select here the single record, I have a form as we see here now. If I select here the multiple records, we will then have multiple uh, of the forms in one form, basically, and we have then also also an editable grid which uh, presents us a slightly different layout and the editable grid view where everything is basically disabled at first and we have then buttons to edit and adjust and it provides more possibilities for the viewing of our data which is very functional and powerful okay so within our forms if I come here first of all here to the edit fields option so from here, I can then view all of our, all of the fields that I have available within this form application. Now I do have multiple ways of adjusting the layout here. So one way is actually just dragging and dropping the field values as I want them, or I could use, for instance, here the field positioning. And from here, then I can just move them around as I want them within the application or adjust them within the field itself, uh, save that, or I could restore it back to its default 
and I can change the layout of our application. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly make some uh, adjustments to all the fields here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'll quickly move them around, and they're in better positions now. Okay, so one important thing to note is here for each of the field types, if I click here in the left-hand menu, I can expand that, and then I can see all of the fields. So within this layout that we have here on the right hand side, the fields configuration, I can directly change here the data type as I had uh, mentioned previously, and I can also change that directly on each field. So I select here, for instance, the photo field, and then within the photo field, I can then customize the entire field options. So from here, for instance, this is a image database field, or we can specify an image file name if I wanted to. It is in fact image from a database, and Scriptcase is so intelligent, it actually reads the database it defines the information that is there and then displays the types for you. Now, the majority of time you will have them already indicated, like we can see here, all of the, all of the text fields are indicated, the date fields, the credit rating here is also indicated as a currency field and the rating here as an integer, basically. In some cases you will want to change these, in others not. So for instance, here we have here the country field. If I come back here to the country field, now this one here, I would want this as a select option, for instance. Now country is a field that we have built in here. So if I come here to the lookup settings manual, and I have here some definitions built in, and there I can select the countries, and that is then automatically applied to the select field. So I will use a title and save that and that field is then automatically defined. So we have multiple options here for the field types. We have text, multiple text lines, integer, decimal, currency, date times, special fields, uh, which include a zip code, localization, for the HTML editor, a signature field, a rating field. So let's go ahead and apply those. Here we have the signature field by uh, Scriptcase that identifies that as an image database. That is actually a signature field. So if I come here, select signature, the options all then change and that is then updated within our application. We can simply save that, and then we can come here, say for instance, to the rating field, and that is then also defined here as a specific field. So here I have rating, and there I can apply specific icons that I want as the enabled icon, or specific icons as the disabled icon, how many icons I want, or how many stars I want, and I can simply run that again, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll see that those specific fields have already been updated. First of all, we have the layout. We have here our rating already applied and we have here our signature field. So I need to make some adjustments to the other fields. And again, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made some adjustments to each of these fields. And if I go ahead and run the form application again, we'll see now that we have here some drop down menus all applied. We have here phone numbers, credit limits, the card types here. So I still need to make an adjustment here for the card type. So let me come back here to the card type. And here you'll see that I select a manual lookup. And what I've done is I've used, I'm using a title. So I say no to that one. And then next time this will display just as the four options instead of displaying this one here, essentially as a title. We have a card number, we have a HTML editor, we have our signature field, and we have down here the country selection, which I believe should be up here. So let me come back here to the edit fields and we can just quickly drag that into the correct position. And I'll just move those around a little more so that makes a little more sense. Okay, so there we save that again. And just like that, our form application will be updated. Okay, so at the moment it's not looking too great. We still need to make some adjustments here. So again, I'll come up here to the form settings. And again, the vertical alignment, you saw that a few moments ago. I will apply that and also apply 100%. And I will also indicate 100% width on my inputs. So if I go ahead and run that application again, we'll see quite a difference. Okay, so one other thing we can do within uh, the form application really nicely is actually generate groups or blocks for our layout. So here we have pages and blocks. So within pages, we can create individual pages, so a tab style application, and we can also create blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and create one block here, and say for instance, I can call it block one, I will create that, and there we then have the name here, the block, 
and we can define some indications here like for instance if it displays this title if the label fields are displayed the position of the label how the fields are displayed and basically the organization of the block so i'm going to add a few more and i'll be right back okay so now that my blocks are created i've also gone ahead and customized them and you can see here i've hiding the label on some of them i'm also for the next ones i'm indicating tabs and we're going to see how that's going to look in a moment and also indicating some width on some of these okay so i'll come back up here to edit fields what i can do then is i can just drag and drop them into the relevant fields or blocks that i want so for instance there i can drag the the signature and comments and here the credit would then basically go here above the credit limit and if i go ahead and run that again oh, i'm still missing there the photo so let me apply that one there quickly and if i go ahead and run that now we will then have a different layout for our application okay and i actually missed one thing there so let me come back here to the blocks and this one next one here should actually be beside and if i run that again we'll see that image now be next to our information here and we can see now we have this information in a tabbed kind of layout here okay so one thing i want to do is then add actually a new form to this and with that by what i mean is by adding a master detail which we can then add here to this form. But for that, first of all, what I'm gonna to have to do is actually create another application. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And here I will create another form application. Again, I will choose here the table, this time orders, our form orders, create that. And then now here within our form customers, I can go ahead and add a new master detail. So it's gonna go ahead and run that. I'll add here the master detail and I'll call it orders. I won't create the block because I have already added that because I, I have the option here to create a new block if I want to uh, say create. And then here I'm going to select the new form that I've just created. And here again, I can indicate the ID that I'm actually passing along. Go next, confirm that. And then here we can specify whether we want to have the insert update and delete buttons displayed, or if we want to maintain a where clause, for instance, if there is one applied, we can also change the display of the application. I'm just gonna go ahead and save that and come back here to the edit fields and drag that into position, which actually, in fact, it already is here in purchases. So if I go ahead and run the form application, we now have the form displayed beneath that and what i can do then actually here for the orders for instance we can change that here to an editable grid view and if i go ahead and run that the form layout will completely change like so and that is then much better within our customer application now and that will then be displayed like so below here and we can then customize the form application further as well as the other items here. So here, for instance, we want to change this image. So let's go ahead and adjust here the field and just add some dimensions here. So 175 for the height, for instance, and say 200. And again, I can run that. And then that is then simply updated within our application and our form is pretty much complete. So it's quite important to note that for the uh, images and files also, that we can also link this to API and the clickable area can be customized. We can uh, customize which types of files can be uploaded, size and so much more. And it's all configurable within the form application. So before I finish up here with the form customers, I want to show you one last powerful feature here. So for instance, if I go ahead and run the form customers and within this, for instance, we have here if I go here and add new, and then here we have, for instance, the credit rating. So here, for instance, we have a maximum credit limit of 1000. So at the moment, I can add any number in there that I please. And within script case, one of the powerful features are here the events. So within the events here, for instance, I can actually specify what happens at specific stages of the application running. So what I'm going to do is here on on before insert. So before the application inserts, I'm going to apply here a method. And what I'm going to say here is I'm going to call this a credit limit and I'm going to apply that there. If I then save that, and then if I scroll down here to programming, for instance, we have here PHP methods. Now this is a super powerful feature. Now we can actually specify custom PHP methods here. And here is, I will call this then credit limit as I just called this here within the event. I will create that. And then what I can do is then I can code anything I like now within this method, which will then interact then with my application. So here, for instance, I can paste in um, some code 
So I copy this and what I can do is then I can just code a little bit of PHP here. So if credit limit is more than 1000, then what we're going to do is we're going to use a script case macro, which we have loads of them available here on the right hand side, which uh, then extend the capabilities and features of script case as well as some examples here. Uh, so uh, if you want to learn more about these, do watch our webinars. It's definitely worth a watch. And then basically we can then specify then here that then if the limit of over 1000 is entered into the field, then we want to display the user an error message. So if I go ahead and save that, and we will also want to have this displayed on the on before update. So it's not only a happening then on insert, but then also on update. So credit limit. So I'll specify that there. And then if I go ahead and run the form application again, within the form then, if I go here now, add new, and then here I can enter, um, enter an ID for instance, uh, company name, any kind of name, and then here the credit limit. So if I say now 1,500 and then add okay, and the insert. And so let me double check the, here, the credit limit. And of course we have 10,000 here, not 1,000. So if I come back here and if I now go ahead and say, if I change this now to 11,500, go save that, you see it then presents us the error message to the user. So I'll go ahead and add a new one again, and we can do the same thing again. And here add some data, and then for the credit limit, again, if I this time go for say 24,000 or 240,000, I go add, we have then the error message that the limit is over of credit. Okay, so that is then applied here within the PHP method. So this is a super powerful feature. And I should indicate while we're at it, that we do also have the external libraries as well as the internal libraries, which really boost the power of script case. Okay, so we'll then continue on with a new application next. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and create a new application. And this time it will be a chart application. And I will base that again here on the sales table. And then if I just click create, the chart application will be created. Now again, here with the chart, we have drag and drop options where here I will apply some quick options for the chart application. So region, category, product, uh, supply the sales date twice. Also we have year and let's indicate here the month, for instance, uh, for metrics, we want the sales quantity sold as well as the cost. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide some of these by default. So they're not always displayed, but then we can actually specify them within the application and change the dimensions which are displayed. So again, here now we have our grid application. Now this is also click through. So I can actually click through to the relevant data and go back to what I want to have displayed. We have the various chart types that we can actually choose from here and change the type of chart that we are having displayed within our application and that is all then clickable up here from the um, toolbar menu. We also have then here sorting options and so much more to actually customize the chart application. For instance, here we have here themes where we can actually customize the themes for, for the charts that we want to have applied and change the layout for this. So this is either inherited from an application or we can apply a custom theme to this and that is then updated within our application. We uh, change the dimension fields further, as well as the metric fields. So viewing one of those, we can see here, for instance, the dimension options or the uh, metric field options that are available for each of those. We have built-in search, as well as then layout options where we can change then the header and footer that is then applied within our application, being this section here. So at the moment there we have chart sales, and there we have also the date applied which we have over here to the right. Now that is the default layout for each of the applications. Again, within the settings here, we can change the header template that is applied within our application, as well as the footer template. If they are applied, we can change the button templates as well as the theme for the individual application or globally. So this time I'm going to show you the dashboard application, which we can just quickly create and generate within script case. So from here we can add widgets within our application as well as index widgets. So we have link widgets and index widgets. So this one here is first of all a link widget, which we can then specify an application to be displayed in here. So for instance here I can say, let's show my grid sales and we can actually specify what happens with the following applications, which are linked to that. So for instance here we have the form sales and I can specify what happens with that 
on click, if it is the default functionality, or whether it creates a widget within our dashboard. So I'm just gonna save that as it is, and if I go ahead and run, we're gonna see then quickly the dashboard application as it is with the grid application in here. And of course, we'd have to make some adjustments here, which we can then simply drag and drop here. And again, there we are. We have then the grid nicely displayed within a dashboard application. Okay, so then the index widgets, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few of these and then we can have a quick look at what they look like. So, okay, so I've gone ahead and created one widget already. This is then the second one. And you can see here that what we have then is the option to select the connection, the table that we want to indicate information from, the metric field, as well as functions and periods. Here, so if I go ahead and save that now, and then when it's applied, it's just created here and I can drag and drop that into position where I want. And then I can just go ahead and run the dashboard application again. And just like that, we have some details and information displayed within a functional dashboard, which can of course be further customized and uh, created within your application. So I'll just, I'll add here one more link widget. So if I drag this one down the bottom here and here I'll add one more link. And this time I'm going to add here the chart sales, save that. And then we'll have here the sales chart displayed and then here the grid application, for instance, this can be displayed at the bottom here and customize a little more. There we go. Now if I run that, we then will have a chart as well as the grid and information displayed in here. And again, this can be further customized and adjusted. So we then also have the menu application. As mentioned previously, this comes in two formats. We have here the default menu, which has then a vertical as well as a horizontal layout. So we can change that here within our application. And so for instance, I can just import here all of our applications. So I will just select them here in a little pop-up window, which has jumped up. So this is what that looks like. And there I can just import those and they are then inserted into my application. And then I can select here one of these themes, for instance, so I select here the gleam dark blue, and then I can have that displayed here. And I can just quickly make some changes and adjustments to the layout. And just like that, our menu is then customized. And as you can see, we can just really quickly change the titles here. We can apply font or some icons also within the menu as I have done so. And that is all configurable here within the application. As I mentioned previously, if I use a different theme here, I could also change here the vertical layout of the application. And if I go ahead and run that now, we can then see what that then looks like. And now what I want to do then quickly is then apply here the dashboard as the first application this then opens. So I will then define that here. If I then run that again now, we can then see the dashboard opening with the menu application. Okay, so what I've done now is I've gone ahead and added one extra button here called Get Started and linked it already to a blank application, which I am now going to create. So I go ahead and first of all, I can run the menu application and we'll see now that we have here the Get Started option and it's not found yet. So if I come here and save the menu and then go New Application and then this time around, I will select here the blank application. I will leave the name as it is. And then what I will do is I'm just going to paste some code into here, which will then create this page. So that really quickly, as, as you can see, the blank application, we can add any code into this application and it will be generated as so. So we can create just about anything here with the blank application. So here, as you can see, you have some typical HTML content with a video and it's all displayed in here with the link here to download. And that is then also added to our demonstration here. So if I now go ahead and run the menu and I can now click here, get started. And that then takes me to the blank application, which I've just created. So we have one last application to create and that is here the calendar application. So go ahead and create that here. We could select the table if we have a table prepared. What I'm going to do is choose here to create a new table for the calendar application. So then I'll create here calendar one, create the table and that will then be created within the database for me. Now all of the fields are then applied. I can simply click create and that will then be created. And straight away I can just run that and we can see then what the calendar application looks like. We have here our categories as well as then a full view of the month. So within the calendar application, I can also display here the mini calendar as well as use here the Google API. If I quickly look at that, we can integrate this here with the Google API and then also display all of our Google calendar events within our application. And that's what it then looks like with the mini calendar. So let's have to quickly add that then to our menu application and then we are ready for the conclusion. 
So now that has been added into our menu application, we can finalize the video today and start creating the security application. So to tie all of this up, what we still need to do is create the security to bundle all of our applications into, which we can then use the quick and easy security module within script case. And that is then available up here, modules and security. And then from there, I can then create a user-based security platform, application-based, group-based, and even LDAP uh, authentication. So for this demonstration, I will just use group. I'll go ahead and go next and then choose the connection to which I'll be creating the security for. And then here straight away, I have the option to create all of the tables. We can then simply click on next and all of the tables will be created for our database. We can close that and as we can then see all of the fields will be automatically selected if we choose to use our own tables then we will need to select all of the relevant fields we can then go next and then we have multiple options here available for the security what kind of security encryption we want to use whether the security is enabled for all of your applications whether the login is remembered the application menu whether this is then created or added in this case we'll add the security menu options into our a resident menu, the one we have just created. And we can then also specify the login information, for instance, how many characters are required, the password, how it can be retrieved for new users, how they are then handled, the email settings for the platform, as well as we can use external templates. So this is where I mentioned previously, we have at the top here, external libraries. So if I enable here the external libraries, for instance, for our security, I have here samples, and I can use that, save the project libraries, and they are then available within our app application so here I will then need to go reload and then select yes that I want to use a login template and here I can then use one of the default templates that are available so I'll go login to for instance I'll go next and that can then be used within our application we then specify our data and go next again and our security applications will be then created so generate and once ready, we can then open up the project, we can generate all of the files. And if I go, for instance, here now app login, we'll have then the login page already with a custom theme. And we can then log into this here. So if I go admin, admin, which is then the default and submit that. That will then take us directly to our menu and it's all secured, all ready to go and then deployed to our online hosting, which I can do then next. So we have then project and from here, then we can deploy our project. So once it's all ready, I select deploy, I select all of the applications, I can go next and it will then tell me there are some applications outdated, which are the security applications I just created, but hadn't generated. So we'll automatically generate those and then update those within the project. And now it's all ready to go. So I can go next again, I specify the operating system and everything I want to use and the login page or the first page I want to have opened. I can next that and then I have multiple options on adding that to my server. So I can actually create a zip file or I can generate a tar file or I can deploy directly to a server directory to an FTP server or SFTP. So in this case, I'm going to deploy to an FTP server. And once I have those uh, details defined, so I have here my server, the host, the username, password, as well as then the folder to which I want this uploaded. So then from there, I just go next, and that will then be automatically deployed to our online server. With that, your project should be complete and added to your own hosting environment, ready to set up. Once you have entered a new password for the backend and set up the database, your platform will be live and ready to use. So I hope you have enjoyed today's demonstration of script case. Before I go, just a quick reminder that there is a wealth of information available on our website. There you will find guides, manuals, documentation, videos. You can join our webinars and so much more to help you advance your projects with Scriptcase. Thank you for watching and until next time.